tips over the four hour mark you kind of tension starts to waver I mean it's not our favourite thing to do um, regardless but uh, the facts are is if you were the guy that was turning up um, six hours later you know six in our sixth hour interview you're going to get the prodigy talking like this about whatever <laughs> and yeah but we, you know we've got a great album we're buzzing about it we it's want you to hear it with the energy that we We've got about it, you know, yeah. and about the live show and about yeah. everything. That the it's all, it's all key, do you know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. you're an integral part of getting out there and letting right. people understand what we're about. It's a necessary so, evil. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So just go ahead and tell us a little bit about how the album came to be and uh, the recording process and all that. Um, well, we we started, like, I think the album took all in all about 16, 17 months. But um, that wasn't continuous studio time. We were doing shows as well. Um, I think the first five months were kind of an experimental stage. We didn't really have a deal at that stage either, so we kind of felt very free. We, we kind of had a big studio set up, and we wanted to set up an environment where we felt anyone could come in and kind of... Lay stuff down. Yeah, just really free, with no kind of rules. Um, but sort of after five months, we kind of we realised that we, we'd laid down 20 ideas, but we hadn't really got anything that was a finished track you know so we we kind of had a I think what happened is we um, we kind of moved into a much smaller room and at the same time as doing that we, we wrote Warriors Dance which was the first kind of finished track for the record actually it wasn't actually meant to be on the record that track and it was um, actually written I think it was Keith's idea we it was like let's forget about the album for a minute let's kind of write a tune for this live show we've got coming up because we know what that's got to be we know what we know it's got to be a banging tune for that gig, um, so we just set about to do that. And I think that psychologically put my mind in a different headspace and relieved me from the pressures of the album, you know. And um, once that track was written, uh, we played it live a few times, and that, you know, obviously went on the internet then. The fans recorded it, and it became like a fans kind of anthem in a way. Um, so we then thought yeah it's definitely got its place on the record and we just rolled we just rolled ahead from there really and it just became I think once you got a couple of tracks and we also had the album title it kind of fed the rest of the, the writing yeah. um, and we were on a roll then you kind know. of realised that we're going back to the way we used to do things you know like Liam says the first five months were very experimental but it was a necessary evil for us to realise what we did back you know how we how we construct tracks and how we write tracks and how we get ideas together. So we kind of went back to the way we used to do things, we didn't, you know, and that was a very important. Real part. cut, yeah, like real cut and paste way of working. You know, kind of not afraid to throw a lot of stuff at tracks instead of trying to write songs. I think yeah. we were trying to at the beginning. We were kind of I think we were just overthinking it really. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I think yeah. we, 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 we lost the you know the ba you know like the basic. You know, the, the, the reason behind the track is the energy, do you know what I mean? But it's created from the beats and the bass, do you know what I mean? And that, that's what triggers us off and gets, uh, gets us excited in the first place, do you know what I mean? And I think we were in the first you know, five months, we was kind of like doing it the opposite way of trying to write tracks where there wasn't any energy in actually just writing the vocals first and trying to create music after, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That wasn't exciting us. So, like Liam says, do you know what I mean? You know, how we used to write is like Liam would create that beats is the way. and bass and studio and we get me and Keith would go in the studio and think, fucking hell, man, it's, it's rocks, man. Do you know what I mean? We get excited about the, the music and then the lyrics and the ideas will flow after that. Did you guys have the idea to um, you know, start the own, your own label and put out the record that way uh, while you were writing it? Or was that just kind of a spur of the moment type thing? Um, no, it was, it was pretty much well thought out. I mean, one, once we left XL, um, who were a great label and are a great label, um, we kind of knew that 
we weren't ever going to sign to a major record label. We, we thought, um, you know, you've got bands like Radiohead and kind of various other big bands that kind of stood up and made certain moves to kind of move away from, um, I think, us being one of the bands to kind of go, no, we don't want to be part of that big industry thing. And so it's not a greater time than now to make those kind of moves to be more independent, do you know what I mean? So there was never a question of um, we wouldn't do it. It was just finding the right kind of um, people to back it and stuff that believe in the band. And uh, once they heard the songs, they were in, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't seem like uh, you know well-established artists at this point, they don't really need a record label no, exactly. so much. Yeah. You know, they can pretty much promote themselves. The fans know where to find them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. as long as they have a good management team. And I love that because all, all the big companies don't know what they don't know what to do. They're scrabbling. They're like thinking, we've got a, how are we going to make money? We're going to have to do all these 360 deals, which is a load of nonsense. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's stripping the artist of all their kind of artistic license. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. Fucking, it just it really annoys me. Do you know what I mean? It's like they you want know, to sell your t-shirts and everything. You know, it's kind of like you're never going to get a cool band to come out of that scenario. You know? No. You know, it's it's going to be all the pop shit like. Lady Gaga, the, the shit you're force-fed, you know, you know that's just a big marketing thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's ridiculous the way that it was structured, anyways, because I mean, you didn't really own your music at that point. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, um, so we're really against that. Do you know what I mean? We're we're kind of old school in that way of thinking, and we can't our heads can't be changed. You know, we're not gonna, we, we won't, we don't want to do it any other way. Do you know what I mean? You guys came uh, about in the 90s when there was, you know, kind of a, a big uh, dance music craze at that point, and then it kind of went away for a while. It seems like it's coming back, but do you think that it will ever be, uh, you know, where it was in the in the 90s? I don't think we, I don't think we're fussed, are we? No. Because we, we kind of tried. To, I think the prodigy has tried to ride the edge of that always. We we haven't tried to um, sort of saturate ourselves in like a. a Particular scene. I mean, we know we are part of the electronic, uh, the history of electronic music in, in England. But like, we've always tried to just ride the boundary of it, so we don't get sucked into it. I mean, when the rave scene went down in England, you know, we made a big decision to kind of like go, are we going with that and possibly going down with that, or are we going to effectively start again and be our own entity and kind of like be our own band and go off and do that so we decided to do that so we you know we hope like the underground scene is will keep alive which it always will because there's always kids that want to go out and take drugs mm. and kind of have a mad time and this is what this music is about it's about hedonism it's about escapism you know we're not bothered about the, the kind of weight of political messages and shit like that we kind of you know certain bands think that when you're in a band you should have a voice to to voice that those opinions, they don't interest us, I don't think. I mean. And then uh, you guys are touring the US um, right now, and then you're going to go back into Europe. Is there any plans for like a full scale US tour in the upcoming future? Or because you just kind of play. Uh... <laughs> this is it. I mean, this is it. I mean, you know, it's kind of like touring the States is a, is a really costly process, you know, and, um, you know, it's kind of um, it's a, it's a hard. It's a hard place to be, you know. We, the determination and the hunger is there to do it. Um, you you know, the infrastructure is not really here for us to. You know, uh, hopefully it will. Do you know I mean we'll come back and we'll tour and we'll take it to other as a city and so forth? But it's different, isn't it? Because in Europe, you know, you'll have like you might do a festival in Germany, one of many, and then you you might do a few gigs off the back of that. But here in America, just doesn't seem to be many kind of. Um, I mean, you have Coachella, which is great. Uh, and a, and a couple of others, but they're just for such a big place. You'd think there'd be more kind of opportunities to come here, yeah. or play with other bands and stuff like that. Yeah. I think th I think for the most part in the states, it's just the music scene is just so saturated. Right. You yeah. know, I mean, you can pretty much go downtown or Hollywood every night of the week yeah. and see you know a really great band. Right. And so it's just you know for the fans, it gets yeah. expensive. Sure, right, right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like, it's kind of like in each state, you would have thought there was some kind of festival in each state where all the bands in that state or, you know, from 
get from other states. Even, you know. Yeah, put it on and make it a good ticket, make it a good value thing. You know, it's, it's that's like what we do at it's home. Not, it's not like he's struggling yeah. for space here. For festival. Mm. It's like we, we just come off of an English arena tour. In uh, we did the whole of England, and we, we we took on we took Dizzy Rascal with us, who's like a you know he's UK hip hop. He's um, great. Yeah, we love him. You know. And, but, we, but the idea was we wanted to put, it was like, it was almost like a mini festival, we were touring around England, mm. you know, and that was that was cool, I think the kids kind of like really liked the bill, they liked the DJs we had on and just, we tried to make it an event, you know. What do you like more playing, uh, like the arena tours or the club circuit? I think, I think you need it all, mm. you know, you need the diversity, I think that that's, that's what the band th uh, thrives on, you know, going and playing you know, uh, a download festival with, you know, all the current um, rock bands and, you know, the heavy, heavy bands um, is, is, and then on the flip side doing um, Gatecrasher and, you know, the, which is a complete dance event, you know, and then, you know, doing the festival season, seeing the other bands, you know, getting the opportunity to play outside and, you know, suck up the summer is, is great and then, you know, and then shrink it back down. You know, like it coming, even coming here after a, a big arena tour in England, you're back down into the clubs again. You know, one thousand, two thousand people. Uh, we thrive on that. You know, as long as we can make it banging, keep the sound good, keep you know, keep it, you know, as, again, make it good value for the people that come to see us. You know, every respect. When we do our own shows, obviously taking it back in the clubs. We when we're doing the festival, there's a little compromise of what you can bring to the festival, sound wise, light wise. But obviously, when you're doing your own individual shows and go back into the clubs. It's one hundred percent controlled by us as I said it's, it's, it's our lights, our sound and sound. And you know, so it's one hundred percent the band. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for those who haven't seen you live, uh, just kinda of sum up, you know, like what is the prodigy show all about? Beat, bass, energy and venom. Mm -hmm. Alright, well uh, thanks for taking time and uh, have a great show tonight. Cheers. Thanks, man. Nice. And, uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for having us.